Hi, I'm Matthew, a product marketing manager and SEO expert at Wix. Now that your store is set up and ready for business, let's talk about how you can get more customers for your e-com business. In today's lesson, you'll learn how to attract customers using SEO for e-commerce, online advertising, and influencers. So what is SEO? SEO stands for search engine optimization and is all about getting search engines like Google to show your website high up on the search engine results page, better known as SERP. When a user types in a search phrase, also known as a query, the search engine will provide them with a list of results designed to be as relevant as possible to the specific query. So why do you need to optimize your SEO? Optimizing your SEO ensures that your site pages get found and rank high on Google, increases brand visibility and recognition, and boosts site traffic and hopefully sales. Wix tries to take care as much of the technical aspects of SEO for you. This includes adding product schema markup to your product pages automatically, as well as adding e-commerce analytics tracking events that you can send directly to your Google Analytics. So let's talk about keyword research. What is keyword research? Keyword research is the process of finding the best phrases and search terms for your website to try and rank for in particular search engine results pages. The best thing to do here is to narrow down the audience and speak directly to them and not to the general public. Why is keyword research important? Proper keyword research is needed to have the best chance of helping your website rank, which means people will be able to find your store online. This increased traffic leads to more potential customers, which can lead to more sales for your business. Secondly, the right keywords will affect your overall content strategy, as the terms will help define the content you create around them in blog posts and other promotional materials on your site. So how do you do keyword research? There are a few steps involved. First is making a list of potential keywords that you want to use. Then take that list and conduct an in-depth search. Then after doing your research, you fine tune your keywords and whittle down your list. And then you put them to use by adding them to your pages. So let's run through an example using Hip Hip Shop, a creative store. They sell various games and products for kids. Today, we're going to add a new product for them, nesting dolls. I'm going to start by making a list of potential keywords that are relevant to Hip Hip and this specific product. I'll need to include a mix of general and specific terms. We call these long tail and short tail keywords. If you go too generic with your keywords, it's like owning a store and running into the street saying, I sell things. You're not going to find the customers you're looking for. You're better off running into the street saying, I'm an educational toy store and I'm selling nesting dolls. That's very specific and that's going to get you the shoppers that you want. Shoppers have a specific intent and will be using specific keywords in order to show that. For example, someone searching for best educational toys for kids is more likely in the research phase, and this keyword would be great for a blog article, but not necessarily for your product page. Whereas someone searching for buy educational toys or buy nesting dolls for kids, that has a specific purchase intent. For your e-commerce, you want to focus on those want to buy moments and optimize product pages for this intent. To get started, I can use a keyword like nesting dolls for children and then search for it in Google to find relevant keywords. You can use the autocomplete as well as the related searches at the bottom to come up with some good ideas. Another great place to find keywords is Quora or other social networks. There are also plenty of keyword research tools such as Answer the Public, Google Keyword Planner, or other keyword tools that are great for finding search volume and also additional keyword ideas as well as help with your competitor analysis. For more info on how to conduct a full competitor analysis, check out lesson two of the first Ecom School course. So your search competition is made up of pages that are ranking for a keyword that you are using or you would also like to rank for. For example, if you're an eco-friendly toy retailer in the US and someone searches for eco-friendly toys US, your search competition includes the businesses that appear, but also news articles, Wikipedia pages, and other websites that rank high. So if you see a high profile website like Wikipedia, CNN, or other major news outlets ranking for this keyword, it's going to be very difficult to reach the top spot. So maybe you should try ranking for a different keyword. Once I've conducted my in-depth search, it's time to fine tune the list and put the keywords in place. Remember, more is not necessarily better. If you have too many keywords, it can dilute your SEO efforts. Let's talk about optimizing your SEO settings. Meta tags are pieces of code that help Google and other social networks know that your product pages are part of an online store. Meta tags pull relevant information about your products like availability, price, color options, and optimizing these settings can improve your product pages ranking in search engines and drive more shoppers to your store. When writing your descriptions, use wording that your target audience searches for. Try and speak in their language. 
Use your keywords in the SEO title and SEO description. When you add a product to your page, the name and description that you give that product will be used for your meta tags, URL slug, and the page title. Try and write unique content in your product descriptions. But don't be afraid to sell here. Be informative. Convince me that I need this product. This is a great place to include relevant information like, in this case, recommended age groups, types of personalities. It's a great chance to become an authority on what you're trying to sell. Next, try and update your alt text to be descriptive to all the images in your product. Let's take this store for example and go to the product page in the site's dashboard. Click on the product, choose Edit SEO Settings on the right, then click the Page SEO tab in the Settings panel. We can see that the default SEO title has been pulled from the meta tags. It's always a good idea to check your page SEO settings and customize them using keywords to give your page the best chance of ranking on search engines. To edit your page SEO settings, click the text box and enter the URL slug. You can edit the part of the URL based on the product name. For the SEO title, keep the title between 55 to 70 characters, including spaces. We recommend mentioning your product name and site name in the title. Use the SEO description to tell potential customers more about your store to encourage them to view the page. Keep the description between 50 to 320 characters, including spaces. Include the keyword you're focusing on so it's displayed in bold in the Google search results. Click the Show this page in search results toggle to show and hide the page from search engines. Click Save at the bottom of the tab to save your changes. Remember, your website is a collection of pages and Google reads them separately so you need to optimize your SEO for each individual page. Editing all of the SEO descriptions for your product pages is definitely worthwhile, but depending on how many pages you have, it can be quite time consuming. SEO patterns are a great tool to save time and apply the same SEO logic for many pages at once. Instead of editing each page's individual settings, you can customize the patterns that apply to entire sections of your site. This way, creating an SEO strategy becomes systematic and easy. Hip Hip wants to create a 20% off sale for all the products in their store. We can easily update all of our products by using SEO patterns. I'm going to go to the Marketing and SEO tab and then go to SEO Tools. This is where we'll find the SEO pattern settings. So I'm going to click on SEO patterns and then go to the Products SEO pattern. So this will update all of our products. I'm going to click on the SEO title and add 20% off. And in my SEO description, I'm going to add the text on sale now. And I'm going to click Apply Changes. And there you go. All the product pages are updated with the new SEO title and SEO description. So up until now, we focused on increasing our organic traffic with SEO. Now we're going to talk about increasing our paid traffic using online advertising. Online advertising is a great way to drive traffic to your product pages. Online advertising can sound expensive, but it really isn't. It offers you the best chance of scaling your business, and you can start advertising with Facebook and Google for as little as $100. Both Google and Facebook are great places to advertise. Google ads work around the shopper's intent, as people use search engines to both gather information and instantly shop for products they want or need. Facebook ads work by targeting relevant potential customers and triggering their interest with strong visuals. Facebook Ads by Wix target the right shoppers for your store on Facebook and Instagram. To make it easier for you, Wix's machine learning algorithm optimizes your ad campaigns so you don't have to manually monitor their performance. To get started, go to your site dashboard and click Marketing and SEO. Select Facebook Ads, then click Get Started. Click Connect to Facebook to link your online store to your Facebook business account. This is your ad content. By default, all your products will be selected, but you can choose the ones you want to feature. Products in your ads will automatically change in order to best meet the needs and interests of potential customers. Now edit your caption and write the text that makes customers want to click and shop. Then preview your ad and click Next. Okay, now you're going to define your audience, choose their gender, age, add special interests like men's fashion, and include the location of your target audience from country, state, or region and then click Next. Set your monthly campaign budget and decide how long your campaign will run, continuously or choose an end date. Keep in mind that the algorithm needs time to learn, so running longer campaigns improves the quality of your audience and ultimately performance. When you're all set, click Next. Review your campaign before checkout. Review your audience, content, and budget settings. If you want to make changes to anything, click Edit. When you're ready to launch your ad campaign, 
click Continue to check out and add your payment details. When you're done, click Submit Purchase. Your ad campaign will be reviewed by Facebook before going live. When your ad is given a green light, you'll receive an email notification. Once your ad is posted, Wix's machine learning algorithm starts targeting your audience. Potential customers will start seeing your ads as part of their Facebook or Instagram feed. When customers click on your ad, they will be sent directly to your store to purchase. From your site's dashboard, under Facebook ads, you can track ad engagements and its impact on your purchase funnel. You'll get data on ad views, store visits, revenue, and more. All right, now let's talk about Google ads. Search engines like Google are a really effective place to advertise online because searchers have a specific intent so you can get your product in front of shoppers when they're searching for businesses and products like yours. There's also high volumes of traffic, so you only pay for results, which is when someone clicks on your ad. For more information, check out our blog article in the resources below for a step-by-step -step guide on how to advertise on Google and monitor your ad's performance. Another great way to increase traffic is Google Shopping. When you advertise with Google Shopping, your products will appear for relevant search queries at the top of the search engine results page, and potential customers can click on the ad and shop directly from your store. For example, if you Google women's summer dresses, the results displayed on the top right of the SERP are Google Shopping ads. So let's set up the Ad Scale Google Ads app to sell on Google Shopping. Click the App Market icon on the left side of the editor. Type Ad Scale in the search bar and select Ad Scale Google Ads from the results. Click Add to Site. You can choose to advertise every product or select specific products. You can also set a budget for your campaign. After the initial setup, you can manage your campaigns in the Ad Scale dashboard. To access it, click the Apps tab in your site's dashboard. The third and final way to increase traffic to your site is influencers. Influencers play a huge role in today's e commerce market. They can be a great way to increase brand awareness, positive brand associations, and hopefully lead to sales. If you're thinking about working with influencers, don't worry, you won't need the Kardashians on your side. Think about who might be relevant for your brand and have social clout with your target market. Even nano influencers can set things in motion and can be a more affordable option. And as your business grows, you can consider bigger, more costly influencers. But remember, when it comes to influencer marketing, it's not necessarily about who has the most followers. It's best to keep your brand alignment authentic as this will have greater impact on your audience. Now that you have customers for your online store, check out lesson four to learn how to increase your sales.